So, um, let me read from uh, Pope Benedict's uh, Declaratio, and I'll just read a few phrases here. Uh, he says, Beni conscious sum hoc munus secundum suam essentiam spiritualem. Now what he just said there is that he's, he's very well aware that the munus of the pape, of the Roman pontiff has is essentially a spiritual nature. And then he says, non solum agendo et loquendo, ex que debere sed non minus paciendo et orando. In other words, uh, he's aware that this munus uh, has an active element words and deeds, but no less, it has a passive element of suffering and prayer. And then, towards the end of his Declaratio, he says, uh, Incapacitatem meam ad ministerium mihi commissum beni administrandum agnoscere debeam. Uh, he's recognizing his incapacity to keep doing this active ministry of, of words and deeds. And so he says, Declaro me ministerio episcopi Romae, successoris sancti Petri. And then a little later he says, renunciare. So what he did there is he did something odd. He switched from using the expression munus petrum which he repeated again and again. Which means what? Uh, it means the office of Peter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then he changed that at the end. You know, the the money line in his declaratio is the renunciation, mm -hmm. and what he actually renounces is the ministerio episcopi Roma, the ministry of the bishop of Rome. So we have to ask ourselves. Uh, why did he replace munis with ministerium and why did he replace you know Petr petronum with uh episcopi roma mm -hmm. uh and um you know why change the the way he was narrating things uh and i think there are what he was essentially doing in that declaratio uh is that he at the beginning of the declaratio he says this munis is carried out in an active way through words and deeds, and he's clearly not up for that anymore. But it's also carried out by suffering and prayer. Well, he can still do the suffering and the prayer, so he hasn't renounced completely that munis. That office, see? yeah. That office. But that's a problem, because that's the one little thing you have to do to resign from the papacy. It's not that difficult. According it's like to canon law. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He has to resign uh, the office. And so we don't have that in the key phrase of the Declaratio. Now, um, the, the fact of the matter is, is that we have to understand uh, Pope Benedict's use of the word munis in his Declaratio with a whole controversy, uh, John Henry, that's been going on uh, for the last 60 years since Vatican II. In my research, what I've uncovered is that many traditional Catholics are aware of obviously uh, the problems with the new mass, the, the problems of the conciliar church with regard to the reception of Holy Communion, the problems of the conciliar church with regards to uh, bishops conferences and the teaching on human sexuality. Well, I was surprised to learn that there's another crisis in the church which most people are not aware of. You know, fighting a war on so many fronts, it's understandable that we've not, we're not going to be aware of everything. But there's actually a crisis in ecclesiology. Now that's a fancy word for the church's theology of, of church. Uh, and um, I, I can share a couple of quotes with you, if you'd like, uh, from some professors regarding this, this un, unknown or not widely known crisis in the, the, the ecclesiology of the church, which actually, it seems, like everything else in the post-Vatican II world, has impacted maybe even the, the legitimacy of uh, uh, Papa Ratzinger's uh, renunciation. Uh, so let me give you a quote. This quote is from Bishop Arietta, who is the secretary of the Pontifical Council 
for the interpretation of legislative texts. And he's also a professor of canon law. And he talks about, in an article from 1995, you know, over 25 years ago, he says, problems have arisen since the council with regard to the public function and the notion of office are particularly reflected in the fluctuating use of notions such as munis, ministry, and office, both in doctrine and in the official texts of the church. And Arietta's remarks are echoed by another professor. Her name is Anna Slawakowska. Hope I'm not butchering the Polish there. She's from the John Paul II Catholic University of Lublin. And in her article, she says, the, the purpose of this article, this is from 2015, is the interpretation of the notion of munis in the Constitution Lumen Gentium, right, from Vatican II. And listen to what she says. The Latin noun munis is an ambiguous word. Full stop. <laughs> And she says, in the teaching of the Second Vatican Council, this word is presented up to 255 times. And she goes through the various meanings of it. It could mean office, it could mean function, it could mean service, it could mean ministry. And she says, she concludes, in many places, the translation of the Constitution from the Latin language into the Polish language, both in 1968 and in 2002, are different. And she says this can only, this can cause not only problems of interpretation, but also doctrinal problems. And so this is what I bring up to many people who say, well, ministerium, it means if you look it up in a Lewis and Short diction, Latin dictionary, it means the same thing as uh, as munis. Uh, and according to the uh, experts in canon law, that's not necessarily so. In fact, if you'll indulge me a minute longer here. This is what um, Slawakowska has to say. The term munis is most often analyzed in the literature with two others, officium and ministerium. And she says this, they are also synonymous with it, but at the same time, each of them can mean something different. And this is the, the key phrase in her statement, their use whether separate or synonymous, always depends on the context of the utterance, the author's intention, or the purpose for which they are used. Hmm. 